us. Mm-hmm. His name, I couldn't even believe the guy. His name was Mr. Important Williams. Mm-hmm. He, he, my mother just called him Mr. Important. And this one day, his house did burn down. Mm-hmm. And that story just came to my mind. Mm-hmm. Now, this guy, Chick, Chick was my best friend. Believe it or not, when this album came out, Chick bought five of them because he was a star. He, <laughs> you know, he, I, and I, I had no idea that I was going to even mm-hmm. say, but I made him as God bless him. He's, he was the, uh, um, he became the, uh, one of the leaders of the Masons in my hometown. But uh, this album made him a superstar. Mm-hmm. He came to me, he told me, hey, yeah, you're talking about me and your new record there, boy. <laughs> you know, and uh, I really felt good, you know. And mm-hmm. all the guys that I grew up with, they had this album and uh, they told uh, Chick Roland Baker, yeah. yeah, he was a superstar. You know, another thing I like about this song is is uh, the stories that you put in the monologue are believable because I, I've known people who lost everything and they said it's all right. It was on 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 uh, CNN. I never forget about uh, four or five years ago. This hurricane had went through the south, and the Mississippi River, mm-hmm. River River was overflowing, and it was washing people's houses away. And this one lady, she was telling everybody, you know, how good God is, and and and, and you know, don't worry about it because God knows how much you can take. You know, this is the material. This is just a house is going. But about uh, the, the next two days, her house got washed away and she didn't see it that way you know yeah you know she was asking god why yeah you know the song it's all right uh believe me you know especially today yeah it's yeah, absolutely right. when yeah. you recorded that for this album had you rehearsed it or no. this was part no. of the live show in new jersey uh this no, was, this is a recording this was a recording yeah. but uh at the, at the t- we were recording and it, d- they said jerry just come up with something you know it yeah. was almost like ad lib it was ad lib and the story the story was something that i just came to me at the time, I didn't have time to. Did you guys ever do more of this that didn't get recorded? Anything like this? B- probably did. I, yeah. I don't remember at the time, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, because back in those days they was doing analog, so they did a lot of throwing stuff on the floor. A lot mm-hmm. of tape was thrown away. Boy, we wish we could have that now. Though. Yeah, absolutely. The, this song also was the first time I've ever heard the word blase. <laughs> Yeah, blase. I didn't know what that meant, so. But and you know what, Drew? When I first met him and heard him say, you know, blase, blase. How do you say it? That well, see, the word is blase. Yeah. But 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 Tubo had taught us this. Mir Seri, which was, was Murray Decay. Mm-hmm. He had a radio show in New York, and Tubo was from New York, but yeah. you know, so Tubo, he, Tubo talked. That mere seri, that was there. That's what they called it at the time. And Tubo was t- teaching us how to say blase, 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 which where you would take, um, like you say, uh, this album, this uh, album, uh, well, you use the Z's. Oh, right, right, right. You know, yep, with yep. the Murray Decay, that, that was a. Uh, um, You're outdating us now. Well, listen, we're just listening to It's All Right, boy. That's a lot of words, especially at that time, Mm -hmm. you know. But I went from there to when we get into Frank Zappa and to Jerry Garcia. Boy, we're talking about a lot of words. Right, but backing up for a minute, you participated in theater. By the time you were singing, you had already been doing a lot of shows in school. Yeah, the Coasters had a song uh, song out called Along Came Jones. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, that was part of a play that we had on, we put on in high school. The 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 mustache villain. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was me. Okay. <laughs> you know, I was the villain, and uh, along came Jones, who saved a girl who was tied on a railroad track and everything. Wow. You know. <laughs> Okay, Jerry and Julie, we've made it through the first album. Uh, tell me what happened after the album came out. Well, what happened was that after we had uh, 
did this concert with the Pink Album and met Frank Zappa. And David came to us with this idea about hitting the road. This is when, because all of us at the time, we had quit the jobs and uh, we went out on the road and uh, worked uh, for 40 years. I never will forget, we left, we left home. It was five black guys and a Jew and a Ford Torino. And we left for Colorado. That was our first. That should have been your next album title. <laughs> we, we, we Five left. Black Guys and a Jew, your next we, album we, title. We left, we left for Colorado, boy. And, uh, you know, think about it. You know, we packing our little clothes because we telling the family we hitting the road. We going on that. We, we professionals now because we got an album out and we going on the road and everything. So we went to Colorado, Denver. And we played a nightclub there. We was going to play that club for like four weeks. And uh, we did play it for four weeks. And uh, David Dashev told us after the four weeks, he said, you know, I know we're supposed to go back to New York. He said, but you know what? We're booked at a place in Los Angeles called Ashgrove. And from there, we're going to do UCLA. And from there, we're going to start doing the colleges. This is when we, well, we went to L.A. from, from, from uh, we called the job, told them we wasn't coming back right now, you know. So we went to Los Angeles. And I never will forget, we performed with Bodacious, Bodacious Boo Gorilla, and B- Muddy Water. Yeah. And we became... Stars. That's pretty cool. Man, we started to rock. So, did you speak with Muddy? Oh, plenty of times. Mm -hmm. You know, I just thought he was just one of the greatest because Muddy Water and Little Richard. Yeah, he's a big star. Mm -hmm. And in fact, he was one of the guys that in my uncle's juke joint, I used to play up Muddy Water's records. Muddy Water, Jimmy Reed, you know, you got me running, you got me hiding. You got me right. You know, I used to play those records. And so uh, here I am at the Ashgrove Theater opening for Muddy Water. I can't believe it. That is that is super cool. That's super cool. So let me ask you, um, also during this time, did you guys get any radio airplay at the time? It's, uh, um, did you do interviews with radios or any of that kind of thing? Well, you know, David Dashev, Eric Malamud, and uh, I can't think of uh, the other gentleman's name. He's going to kill me because I should know his name. But we had KP, KPPC in L.A., in LA and uh, we started doing commercials. And uh, we did a, a ID for K. KPPC FM, the sound of a radio. KPPC FM, Los Angeles radio, radio, something like that. It went. <laughs> now, was that the station that Doctor Demento had yes, his show? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Doctor D became a huge fan, right? And didn't you record his station ID, which gave you yeah, the, even more airplay? We became of- big time stars. We were stars in Los Angeles. We we, we was like local stars. We weren't as big as the Temptations because they were world, you know. But we were locally. We were superstars because we. Also had a sound that nobody had never heard, the acapella, you know. Uh, and you could do it anywhere you went. We didn't. And you did. You sang, whether it was in a Denny's or yeah. Denny's. Uh, walking down the street in the grocery the store, you were just always singing. Wedding them and dead them in funerals. And we could, uh, hey, listen, I'm just telling you the truth. Yeah. You know, people would say, look, my, my, my uncle passed away. Could you guys right. do? I never will forget. We did a, I, I'm just reminiscing. We did a show. Not a show. We did a guy's funeral. He asked us, he said, my grandmother passed. Would you guys sing at her funeral? His name was Sparky Martin. And he'll remember this. And uh, at the funeral, the preacher, he was gay. And it didn't matter. But uh, he said, he said, you know, I, I have a laughing box in me. And once that box is turned up, you can't stop me from laughing when I start. Well, this preacher, he said, Sister Martin had a tale to tell 
Her tale has been told. What a wonderful tale she had. All of us have tales. And one day our tale will be told. And 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 I said to myself, if this guy said tale one more time, <laughs> you know, I, my laughing box is going to turn over. You know, and he went on and he said, you have a tale oh, and God. I have a tale. <laughs> Believe it or not, my tale has been told. And boy, my laughing box flipped over and I couldn't stop laughing. They had to take, I had to go outside of the funeral. And it was time for us to get in front of the casket and sing. Oh. You know, oh God, I couldn't sing because I couldn't stop laughing because my laughing box had turned over. Once it started, it started out. So they had to postpone our little performance for the lady until my laughing box calmed down. And the pastor was still in there talking about his tale has been told <laughs> the Jerry Lawson tale has been told <laughs> stay tuned for the next Jerry Lawson Legacy Project where the topic will be album two thanks Jerry and Julie the Way Way Back Blues is straight ahead America is endorsed by the Phoenix Blues Society. Learn how to become a member at phoenixblues.org. It's time to go back, baby. Way, way back. This is the Way, Way Back Blues. Well, no more slipping and dodging around with you. No more slipping and dodging around with you. If you want to be my baby, you know what you have to do. Life is like a card game, always take the chance. Life is like a card game, always take the chance. 